Welcome to Snay's Home, site owned and managed by the Woodland Trust, supported by the White Rose Forest. We finished the, the planting season on schedule and, and, and planted all the areas that we wanted to plant this season. And we do have a little bit to come back through next year to do a little bit more planting. Uh, we're just at the moment, you might see in the background behind me, we've just finished off on last bits of fencing, now the, now the ground's dried up. Um, and we've got the cows back on, the cattle back on, uh, grazing in the valley bottom. And then we've got a little, little bit of track work just to finish off uh, before we really finish off the, the bulk of this capital works. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so here today with Leeds and York University, who we've got a collaboration agreement here with, um, and White Rose Forest funded to support that work. And yeah, it's really great to have them on site to monitor and research the, our interventions here and our actions here to see what the response is. So that's great for me, the site manager, to see what the responses are and, and adapt our management based on that, really. So I'm principally interested in soil ecology, so that's all the organisms that live in soil and cycle nutrients and cycle carbon, that kind of thing. And over the last year we've been instrumenting the site to try and understand the climate and the weather and how water principally, which controls a lot of these processes, varies. Because we know that in the background of climate change, water stress is going to become very important, even more important for these organisms. And when forest comes into the system or we change the management of the system, there's the potential to affect these processes. And at the moment the soil is really dry. It's as dry as it's ever been in the last hundred years. It's been precipitously falling for the last few weeks. So this week we've actually been out taking some samples from all around the catchment and we're going to have a look at the functioning of those soil organisms, see how resistant they've been to this drought and that'll give us really important data so that as we go forward and the forest starts to expand is that going to change the function of those soil organisms? Are they going to become less affected by climate extremes because of this change in vegetation cover? We've got pressure loggers in nine streams across the catchment, um, which will tell us uh, depth um, and temperature as well, which will provide an understanding of how much water is moving throughout the catchment and then feeding into the main stream at the bottom. And an important part of what we're looking at there is how over time the management in this valley is affecting that hydrological system and we'll be able to link that to the, the data that we are collecting on tree survival, health and growth. This is one of our stream loggers and uh, effectively every five minutes it's taking a reading of pressure, so water pressure and also temperature. Um, and so we have these in across nine of the streams and what we'll be able to do, we'll be able to get um, calibration readings which will then give us the total volume of water that is getting put out uh, in these streams. So with these data loggers, you effectively you plug it into an attachment uh, linked to a laptop and you can take a data file off it um, about and with the pressure and the temperature um, readings on there and then you're able to kind of calibrate that with barometric, so air pressure, um, and then kind of get the true readings for what pressure is. As well as that, what we're able to do is using salt dilution, we calibrate the stream so then we can eventually determine how much water is actually getting pushed through the system. And that is all dependent on what this is telling us in terms of pressure and therefore stream depth. So in the red, you can see that that's rainfall data and the black lines at the bottom are water pressure, um, which you can deduce water flow from. And then you can see at these peak uh, times of uh, high rainfall, you can see that they, they directly correlate to the peak times of high water pressure and therefore high, high stream flow. And you can see that it's, it's pretty instant. The, the rain has peaked, 
and then you see that sudden rise in the in the stream flow. What we're wanting to understand with this data is how this relationship between rainfall and stream flow changes and that could be a change in the lag time so how quickly this peak in in stream flow changes in response to rainfall um, it could be that with the trees establishing create, creating a woodland that this this peak is less steep and kind of slightly delayed So we've had two research protocols so far. Our first set of work was looking at the baseline data um, of the soil across the site. It's incredibly varied uh, due to different weather conditions, climate factors, geology um, over time as the soil is formed. And we want to track this over time as the trees grow across the site. The second protocol that we were investigating was the difference in where trees have been planted across the site. The Woodland Trust has taken a very holistic approach to planting with high density, low density and unplanted patches to create a more natural regenerative woodland feel. And we wanted to look at how the soil organic carbon within each of these densities of planting varied from the initial planting. We have taken topsoil cores. Um, a 15 centimetres of depth because this is where most of the plant soil interactions happen so this is where we're expecting the most initial changes to occur. Um, we take these back to the lab and we essentially dry them and we uh, use a loss and ignition approach to work out how much organic matter is within that soil carbon sample and then we do some maths and it translates into a number which we then say this is how much carbon is within this soil core and then we have an average overall. The other benefit of all this research as well is um, sort of the wider, wider landscape, uh, looking at sort of policies and how land managers manage land going forward. So if we can come up with the research and the evidence to prove or disprove various theories on such land use that we have here, then all the better.